Good morning to come into Life Church. Uh, today is Tuesday, June first, and I hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend. Uh, today is the first of the month. We are already in the sixth month of this year, meaning we're halfway through 2021. Uh, and this morning we're going to be on day nine of the Bible reading plan, nine truths for living God's way. And the theme for today is prayer. It's war on the floor. I like that saying, right? Prayer, it's war on the floor, right? That's how we're going to fight our battles. There's a saying, uh, the best way to fight your battles is on your knees in prayer. Um, prayer is, is one of the most necessary and uh, powerful tools we have on our tool belt of Christianity, right? It's one of the greatest gifts that God has given us, right? Aside from the gift of salvation, but it's like one of the greatest tools that God has given us. But yet when I think about it, prayer is also the most underutilized tool that we as Christians have access to. But why do we underutilize it? Like, why do we not use prayer in the way that we should? You know, does, does it mean that we, we trust God less? Or does it think, or does it communicate that, you know, we have everything under control until we don't, and then as a last resort, we will pray. And I don't think that should be the case, right? For as for as long as we are on God's green earth, right? walking this earth, experiencing God, you and I are always going to be at war against the powers of, of spiritual darkness, right? You, you may not realize it all the time, but believe it or not, Satan is doing whatever he can to take you and I down. He wants to make us stumble he wants to make us fall and the best way for him to make us vulnerable to his attacks or his his schemes is by enticing right god's beloved children to yield to sin thus damaging their fellowship with god right? he wants us to be okay sinning because he knows that's going to jeopardize the intimacy that we have with christ you know, our author says, the enemy will, t will try to discourage you by filling your mind with an array of doubt and confusion. Right? He wants us to second guess God. And when we second guess what God has said and done, believe it or not, it's going to make us trust him a little less. But just because he's trying to get us to doubt doesn't mean we have to believe him and his lies. Even though sometimes, man, it just sounds very, very good. And when it sounds too good, it's too good to be true, right? There's that saying. And so if Satan is trying to break us down, right? If Satan is trying to get us to doubt God and create confusion, right? Which will ultimately lead to, to chaos in our lives. How can we combat that as followers of Christ to live God's way? And so this morning, uh, let's look at Galatians chapter 6, verses 11 to 18. Uh, would you give ear to what God's word says this morning? Right, Paul writes this to the church in Galatia. He says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as, for, as shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Right, Every single piece of the armor of God is important and essential to not only equip us for battle, but it allows us to defend against the enemy's attack. And in some cases, it allows us to be on the offense, right? Destroying the enemy and stopping him right in his tracks. 
You see, the armor of God, it's complete and has a purpose. Each and every single piece that makes up the armor, right? The full armor, right? Paul says that we are going to need this if we want to stand against the schemes of the devil. So that makes every piece important if we want to withstand the enemy's attacks. You see, the enemies we are up against are nothing to take lightly, right? We cannot underestimate them. You see, this battle isn't against flesh and blood, but it's against rulers, right? People in power, people of authority. It's even a battle against cosmic power, powers and spiritual forces of evil. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like serious. Like that's like sounds like serious business. And quite honestly, my understanding that is something beyond our ability to fully comprehend. But this is what we are warned against. The things that the eyes cannot see, but God knows that is present, right? It's like the things that ex- exist in the spiritual realm of life. Like these are the things that you and I are up against. But for the sake of time, I can't go through all the pieces of uh, of armor, but know that each piece of armor is not only vital for your survival, but they are essential for defeating the enemy, right? It is essential for the offense, for the defense, and for the counter attack. But as we wrap up things this morning, let's take a, let's take a look at verse 18. Verse 18 says this, praying at all times, right? This is in light of being equipped with the armor of God, right? That we are to pray at all times in the spirit, with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. We cannot forget what verse 18 says, right? Pray at all times. And that's the key. Praying at all times, in all circumstances, in all the awareness of what is going on in your life, you and I, we need to be in constant prayer. The thing about prayer is that prayer keeps us alert. Right? It keeps us focused. It keeps us aware of what's going on. And because prayer is doing that, I believe that it will allow for us to adjust what we are praying out, praying about, you know, depending on our circumstance. Because we might think it's one thing and God will reveal it's actually something else. And so we can redirect, we can change up the way that we are going about praying for certain things. You see, our author says, make a habit of claiming the armor of God each morning before you leave your house. Right, this is a conscious act of submitting your life to the Lord as your final authority. It reminds us that we need God every step, every moment of our lives. And because we need Him, we need to be equipped in His armor each and every single day. And we need to be in constant communication with the very one who can lead us, who can guide us, and who can give us the power that we need to overcome whatever the enemy might throw our way. And so to live God's way means prayer is the way I go about fighting this war every single time. Church, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you and that this Tuesday you would have a wonderful, blessed day. Until next time, may you go in peace. Amen and amen.